Jack Black, it's a pleasure to be in your company. Thank you. Great to be in your company as well. With Goosebumps, one of the things I loved about it was that it was a real throwback to early 80s movies. I could see influence of Joe Dante's uh, Gremlins in there. But I like the way that you, you're scaring kids, but at the same time, though, it's like you can push the jokes. Like you take, for example, The Goonies, Gremlins, yeah. even Monster Squad to a certain degree. Yeah. If they were put through the studio system now, I would imagine that they would be quite sanitised. Like, I don't think you would have some of the gags that would come through. It must be very difficult trying to get some of that comedy through. Yeah. Um, I mean, the goal was, let's make a movie that the kids are thrilled by, mm -hmm. but uh, the, the parents like watching as well. Not one of those movies where you turn on the DVD and you park your kid in front of it and walk out of the room because mm -hmm. it's so mind-numbingly childish. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, like you say, it works on two levels, or at least that was our idea, that we would cast genuinely funny people with funny jokes for the parents and, and uh, really great thrills for the kids. But no blood. Not one drop of blood. Yeah, but there's some great set pieces, though. And like, just as you think, oh, wait, like that werewolf attack, like that's pretty cool in the, 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 in the supermarket. Yeah. Then you've got the zombie aspect, and it just keeps going. And you know what I mean? And it's such a little, like, lovely little thrill ride caper that's going on yeah. through it. Now, when we first meet your character, Mr. Shivers, won't say too much more about him because we learn more as we go along with him. But he's this hermit type. And I'm just wondering just... For you, like, do, sometimes you kind of feel a bit reclusive living in sort of the Hollywood world and that sometimes it might be difficult to go, difficult to go out and about because like that, people could be coming at you from all angles, looking for photos and what have you. Yeah, I mean, that was something that I related to when I read the script and the character of R.L. Stein is that this is a, char a character that I hadn't played before and that, like you say, he was kind of antisocial and prickly and, and uh, rejected celebrity. And I can relate to that, you know? Mm -hmm. There's days that I don't want to leave the house because I know as soon as I leave the gates, there's going to be some selfies taken <laughs> where you just want to turn it off. And uh, I thought I could do a good job with that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that, that's why I jumped at the chance. Now, you strike me as a very confident man. And uh, one of the things I have to ask you is that last year at the Oscars, when you did your piece... Um, I, would have, I was looking at you going, I, I would, it'd be brown trousers time yeah. if I had to do that, right? <laughs> because you're up there in front of your peers and you've got to do your musical bit there in front of everybody. When you got the opportunity for that gig, was there a part of you thinking, you know, as much as I've done movies and I've worked with an incredible amount of people, this is something I need to, need to think about. Um, yeah, you know, I got the opportunity, I got the call and uh, it was a great concept and uh, I, I kind of like, helped to shape my mm -hmm. little bit, uh, lyrics-wise. And um, as scared as I was, I mean, I, I, I've done it enough times to where I know it's gonna be worth it, yeah. you know? And that, that's the biggest stage there is, really, the Oscars, because the whole world is watching. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be like, there's hundreds of millions. It's different than any other situation, and it's live, and you've got, you know, all of these incredible artists that you're acting in front of. Mm -hmm. uh, so the pressure is is beyond. But um, I, I, yeah, that's why you do it, for mm -hmm. those moments where, uh, you know, those moments that you remember. Well, you're out of your comfort zone as well. Like, there's a part of you going, oh my God, strap yourself in, let's just see how this is gonna go, you know? Yeah. Um, when you do the, uh, the uh, junket scenario, it's like a conveyor belt. So I've got a few quick little questions to throw at you. Like, nothing too mad, but just to get to know you a, a little bit more within our little setting here, as it were. I uh, just want to know, what was the last movie you paid to see? Oh, gosh, you know, I barely ever go to the, the cinema. Oh, I know what it was. Mm -hmm. It was uh, The Hateful Eight. Oh, really good. Yeah, and I got a chance. I paid for it because I wanted to see it in 70 millimeter. Yeah. Because it's, you know, it was shot in 70 millimeter. Yeah. And I was playing at my favorite theater in in Gloria Seven Mill Mill, and it's I, you know it got mixed reviews, so my mm -hmm. expectations were low, but it's a masterpiece. No, oh, it's, it's it's you it's gotta a, just be Agatha in Christie the you style. gotta know what you're stepping into though, mm -hmm. because it's a uh, it's almost like a horror film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. exploding heads. It's the thing, but in, as a western in a way. Man, it, I think it's funny as hell. Oh well, that's Tarantino, like people yeah. go into it expecting a certain thing, and they're like disappointed because it's like a horror film, and it's funny. This is yeah, that's what it is. And um, no one does it like Tarantino. Man. No, they're gonna look back on that one in fifty years and go, "Why did it get bad reviews?" I'd love to see him actually do a horror, like a yeah. proper 
the Exorcist style horror movie. No kidding. Just leave the gags alone and just yeah. st- imagine what he could do with that yeah, mind. Well, you know, he says he's yeah. only got 10 movies, so that means there's only two left. I think he's already made 10. Yeah. I know we're going off on a tangent here. Death Proof, Kill Bill Volume 2. If we were to throw those... Well, he in, doesn't count those? Doesn't count. Oh, right. He's done the 10, Jack, you know what I mean? Uh, another another quick question, right? Um, this is probably a bit of a deep one now. What was the most emotional moment you've had making a movie? Oh, that's easy because... Uh, It was at the end of Nacho Libre. I had worked so hard, like, just physically on that role. Mm -hmm. And uh, and being away uh, from home, we shot it all in Mexico. And um, I was just so spent. At the end, I just remember breaking down and and crying, which is so unlike me. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's some, this is a weird um, relief and catharsis. That is not what you would think (laughs) of the movies. There's some heavy (laughs) movies in there that I've done. It was Nacho <laughs> that really <laughs> brought it That's out That's why of I'm me. asking these questions, to learn a little bit more. I know time is up against us, so um, I would imagine when you sign up for a movie, to bring things back to Goosebumps, um, you're, not, you're not signed up for one. They, they, they would imagine they want to sign you up for a few. So the film's done really well. We should say, like, you know, stateside, great opening weekend. Yeah. You know, God, has it made its money back, and now it's over this side of the world. Yeah. So Goosebumps 2, um, are there any ideas in place? Because I'm thinking... Being from Ireland, you've got we've got some great folklore over in Ireland. Maybe yeah. we could take the goosebumps, take you know you guys over there. We got the banshees, some other kind of crazy things. Yeah. It could work. That's true. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe we should shoot it there. Maybe we should talk about. Well, it. you know, I'm not the writer. I got some ideas though. I think it'd be cool if R. L. Stein went head to head against like some of his competition in the children's uh, oh, yeah. fiction world, mm-hmm. not just you know uh, with regard to book sales, but also you know, just straight up, like someone else with a magic typewriter who can create <laughs> monsters or wizards or whatever. I like it. You know what I mean? I'm thinking we've got a wizards face off. Wizards versus monsters. <laughs> Two letter names. I think you know where yeah, I'm going. And if we just look at the poster behind you, there's a kind of a potterish look. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit. We might have stolen a couple of... <laughs> <laughs> well, let's look on my face, though. I, lo- I look a little constipated. <laughs> That's called, get me some arrest quickly. I'm like, uh. <laughs> Jack, pleasure meeting you, man. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Yeah. <laughs>